<laughs> How much is it? <laughs> What's 35? It's like 550. So it's 550 for a, like a small drip. No, it's not <laughs> yeah. Again? It's probably really nice. <laughs> got here to Copenhagen last night. Oh my gosh, what? Uh, that was a journey. So you just ended up taking the trains from Hamburg during the uh, rail strikes? Yeah, so uh, the whole journey ended up taking us oh almost God. nine hours. So yeah. It was just the entire day. There wasn't really anything eventful happened, so we sort of documented it on uh, Instagram. You can go watch that if you want to. It's gonna be under the Germany highlight. So also, Copenhagen, remarkably expensive, not just the coffee. When we were looking for hotels though, we noticed that the right across the water in Sweden, in Malmo, the hotels are way less expensive. So we only got one night here at a hostel and then we're going to go to Malmo tonight Yeah. and stay there a little bit longer. So we just have the one day here, but I think for now, gotta find a place to store these. <laughs> smack it, it's Let's weird. Go. <laughs> Apparently you can store your stuff at this bagel shop for 13 euro. Okay love, now that you've seen in the daytime, very first impressions of Copenhagen. I think I fall in love. I'm sorry, but I fall in love. Already? <laughs> this whole city feels like like a movie set all the buildings and the streets are so clean and charming and everyone's smiling and it, it's like everyone's like ridiculously nice you know everyone we talk to yeah everyone we talk to. it's just i don't know it just feels like it's like a it's too perfect it's, it's like a movie set i have not had coffee or breakfast yet so i have yet to form an opinion it is pretty though. They're telling you form your opinion based off of coffee. <laughs> yep. <laughs> something so fancy looking on a piece of cardboard before. But for lunch or breakfast, brunch, we went to this place that is a, kind of like a big market with a whole bunch of stalls. Like a luxury food for Yeah, pretty much. And they have like fresh meat and fish and coffee and restaurants and really, really pretty. It's definitely bougie, but it's so pretty. For our food, we chose a traditional Danish Sandwich, I guess? The, does it call a sandwich if we don't have the top bread? I guess it's an open face sandwich, and I, I, I've read this is like very typical of uh, Denmark. So, the one that I got is a piece a, of rye bread with butter, crayfish, avocados, and I think this is dill. I feel really weird eating on a piece of cardboard, but it's kind of fancy. It's one of those things that goes the other direction, it's so fancy. Yeah. You know? Oh, it's cold. It's like really cold, the whole thing. I think the dill is what makes it. It's like not fishy at all. It kind of tastes like a really cold piece of shrimp that's really fresh. I think just having dill on it makes it taste way fresher. And the rye is really good. It's really thin and buttery. And... Yeah. I opted for pretty much the most Danish thing I could find on the menu. It starts with a piece of rye. It's very dense, dense bread. And then butter, Danish meatballs, potato salad, <laughs> onions, chives, and I think these are sprouts for garnish. Garnish. I'm not a fan of like the bougie plate alternative thing that some high-end places do, but let's see. Looking at it, it kind of looks like it could be dry, but it's not dry at all. The meatball is very unique. It almost doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't taste like a meatball, 
It kind of looks like a fish cake. Yeah, it looks like a fish cake or like almost like a Christmas ham or something. I'm glad that the bread is super dense because it sort of just soaks everything up. It's pretty good. I think this might be an angler fish. That is crazy. I've never seen that before. You want to eat it? No. We're still getting used to the uh, USD to uh, Danish krone exchange rate. <laughs> we definitely paid about $26 for two half pieces of a sandwich. That's it okay was though. It so good though and it was worth it because they had really fancy cutlery, like disposable cutlery. It's like the, the, it's like the highest quality cutlery I've ever seen so I snagged it. They're just gonna throw it away. Do you want to show them? Oh, yeah. It's like, so it's gonna go right in my backpack. I told you guys, Tia Sills cutlery. It's these the are weirdest. Disposable. It's the if, weirdest thing. And if they're not, I'm so sorry I stole these. So it is about 1 p.m. now, and it feels like the sun's about to set. We're getting pretty far north. This. It's okay, we have like so many places to be, it doesn't matter. Tia does this thing where she'll type the destination into Instagram, and there's always at least two places we go to entirely based on a picture that she saw at some point. That's okay though, sometimes they're cool. than one piece of our bread. Oh my gosh. It's also curved. So I think this is a like four or five hundred year old observatory. And what's unique is that instead of stairs, they have like a ramp made out of bricks. And we thought since it's snowing, it'd be like a really cool view of Copenhagen. It's not snowing anymore, but still totally worth it. European skylines are awesome. Just a bunch of really old buildings and then the occasional spire. It's not just a mess of skyscrapers, which honestly can look really cool, but I like this more. What do you think, love? I can't take photos with my gloves on. <laughs> it's really frustrating. What do you think of the view? Oh, it's really pretty. <laughs> totally worth it. And I also think we should place all staircases with ramps. So much better, right? Can you imagine getting like um, like a skateboard or something and going all the way back, way back down? You would fall off a skateboard so fast. You don't know that. <laughs> when Tia's emperor, everybody. I think off in the distance here you can even see the bridge. Do you guys see it? Like fades into the fog? That's the bridge that we're taking tonight over to Sweden. Now that you're properly fed and caffeinated, what's your thoughts on Copenhagen? I never got coffee. I have. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I, I actually really do like this city. It feels, it's very pedestrian friendly. Even by European standards, there's like a ton of people that ride bikes. And I noticed that all the Wait, bikes- Wait, 55% have... of people here ride bikes. Did you look that up? Yes. <laughs> All the streets here have like a dedicated bike street that's like an elevated lane, which is really cool. It would make me feel way happier like just commuting on a bike. Uh, I've noticed there's a ton of hot dog stands, which maybe we won't eat because we've had so many bratwurst and things that end with worst the last couple weeks. They're delicious, but I don't feel like I have to eat one. And the architecture here is really, really cool. It doesn't necessarily feel old, it's just... It's just beautiful. <laughs> Sorry. Get out of the way. Look at this. <laughs> That's the street. That's the one? Yeah. Look how many people there are. 
these Instagram famous sites always have a huge amount of people because they're famous on Instagram. But it doesn't matter. She's so happy. Behind me is an enclave within Copenhagen called Christiana, and supposedly it's totally lawless. It dates back to the 70s, a bunch of hippies got together and they basically declared it independent from the rest of Denmark. There are apparently rules that we have to follow in here though. Um, most of them are like hippie dippy rules like smile and uh, don't run because it stresses people out. So the third rule is don't take pictures. Now, everything that we've read says that in some areas, if you're respectful and you ask first, you can. And we're just gonna try and be very discreet. We don't wanna upset anyone or step on anyone's toes. But I just wanted to check it out. Like, you have to check it out, right? That's so cool. A lawless enclave. Are you excited? Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Here we go. Look at this guy. Oh wow, look at that. That's so cool. Actually really well made. The first hundred feet or so. Um, it's really colorful mm -hmm. and pretty. There's a lot of people out and about just going about their lives. We have definitely walked by several people smoking weed. Which is illegal everywhere else in Denmark. But it is like, to us it's like legal in half, half the year. US now. Yeah. So like, it, it, I don't know. I don't really consider it like a bad thing. No, but like, there's also a lot of like tourists here too. There's a, there's a fair amount of people just walking around checking it out. Yeah, it just seems really look cool. Look how look how colorful it is. It's so there's pretty. these murals all over the place. It's awesome. And it's like installation art. And I, I was also reading like a thousand people live here, and I don't think they have to pay taxes because they're they're autonomous. So they're like legit autonomous. Then. I think they're like legit autonomous. We're starting to see a lot of signs that say no photos, so we're gonna put the camera away for now. I think it can fit in my pocket and just report back in a second. Okay, so we definitely found the the lawless part of it. Yeah, that was interesting. There's a lot of um There's a lot of stuff being sold, like the main street I can see why they say no cameras. Yeah. It's just maybe like a hundred foot long section where there's just like a bunch of like pit fires and disposable or collapsible tables set up, mm -hmm. which is people selling stuff. Yeah, but yeah. besides that, everything else is like the art galleries in there and everyone seems really nice. There's a lot of like anti-government graffiti. It's very bohemian mm -hmm. and artistic. There's a lot of murals. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, it's just people going about their day. I've never seen anything like it though. It was, it was interesting. It's insane that like Copenhagen, like the, the city of Copenhagen is like one or two streets away. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, boom, right in the heart of it is just this little community. And I gotta say, with these type of places, you usually go into it and it ends up being way more touristy than you'd expect. Uh -huh. I did get the impression that maybe the most hardcore days are behind this place, but it was still very fascinating nonetheless. It's a, it's, we've never been anywhere in the 30 odd countries we've been to that felt quite like that. It was no. interesting. Are you glad we went now? Yeah, I'm glad. I mean, <laughs> I really liked my colorful buildings, <laughs> but it was still cool. It's like, it's all comes together to like give, paint a really interesting and like unique picture of Denmark, I think. Uh-huh, definitely.
So we thought about it for a long time and we decided we are going to try a Danish hot dog. Mostly because we spent the last 45 minutes walking around looking at restaurants and none of them are even remotely in our price range. So these hot dog stands, it's like $6 for a hot dog, but still doable. Hi. Can we get uh, two Danish hot dogs? Yeah. Thank you. All right, this is the most interesting looking hot dog. So it's in a very small bun. The hot dog itself is pretty big. It's a very like bright color. So first she put mayonnaise on it, mustard, ketchup, diced onions. I'm not sure, maybe that's like a, some sort of like crunchy, flaky crumble thing. <laughs> that's the accurate term. <laughs> that's, that's the official, yeah. And uh, pickles. So there's a lot going on here. These were about $7 each, we each got one, so I'm gonna try it. She, there's a really nice lady, she said, uh, you're definitely gonna have to use a napkin. <laughs> Things are pretty falling off. Those pickles are at the same time the sourest and the sweetest pickle I've ever tried. Not bad, Denmark, not bad. Are you gonna try yours? Just point out the ridiculousness of the, the miniature bun, like, it's kind of an afterthought. Yeah, it's so cute. Mmm, it's sweet. Yeah, <laughs> it's like dessert. <laughs> kind of. Oh, those pickles are so good. Oh, the onions are sweet too. Mmm. I think this is one of the best like examples of when you mix textures, mm -hmm. how good it can be. Because it's like the crunchy onions and then the, the flaky fried thing and the sweetness of the pickle and everything. It's like... That's a pretty good hot dog, but it definitely reminds me of American style more than I would like German style. Mm -hmm. Would you say? Yeah. The temperature is dropping wildly. Yeah. I don't know, the difference between just above freezing and then like 27 degrees is huge with the clothes that we have. But anyways, we're on the world's longest walking street, is that right? I think so, yeah. Like shopping street with like all the famous brands and stuff. A ton of people. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I love it. It's okay. It's amazing how lively it is considering the time of year, how cold it is. Yeah, I also love that like a lot of the city is like pedestrian only. Yeah, it seems really big here, which is... Yeah. Cool. Okay, to Sweden. It's kind of cool to say, right? Just Sweden. Hi. Hello. Yeah, my little chap is it? Big group chat with everybody. They're like talking about how some of them are going to lose his place. And I said. One of the prettiest train stations. All right, we'll see you guys in Sweden tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks for coming with us, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Sounds good! <laughs> that was still pretty... Wait, RBI. <clears throat> Hardcore day. I did... <laughs> Tia for scale against the tallest guy who ever lived. There she is, there's Tia. Dude was tall. It's not fair, he's on a platform. <laughs> oh yeah, you'd be as tall as him if it wasn't for the platform. 